As we mentioned at the beginning, the brain is divided into four regions, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the diencephalon, and the brain stem. We'll begin by looking at the brain stem. The brain stem is the part of the brain between the spinal cord and the diencephalon. It consists of three structures, the medulla oblongata, the pons, and the midbrain. So here in our image we can see the medulla oblongata. The bulge above that or superior to the medulla is the pons and here we have the midbrain. So the brain stem is going to have several areas that we call nuclei. Now remember in the central nervous system a nucleus is a collection of neuronal cell bodies. Okay, So we're not talking about the nucleus of a cell that contains the DNA. So nuclei in the central nervous system is a collection of cell bodies. So some of these nuclei are going to have vital centers for things that are necessary to our survival, such as controlling heart rate, breathing, blood pressure, and many other things. So let's look briefly at that. So the cardiovascular center, of course, is going to regulate the rate and the force of the heartbeat, but also the diameter of the blood vessels to help regulate blood pressure. There's also a center in the medulla that we call the medullary respiratory rate that adjusts the rhythm of your breathing. So you breathe faster or slower depending on the needs of your body. In addition to regulating heart rate and blood pressure and breathing, the nuclei in the medulla also control certain reflexive actions such as vomiting, swallowing, sneezing, coughing, and hiccuping. Since the medulla is responsible for so many of our vital functions, heart rate, respiration, it shouldn't be surprising that injury to the medulla from a hard blow on the back of the neck or the head, uh, such as something that might happen when you fall, can be very, very dangerous. So damage to the medullary respiratory system is especially serious because it can lead to very rapid death in that respirations stop. The symptoms of non-fatal injury, though, to the medulla include some of the loss of cranial nerve function on the same side of the body as the injury. Sometimes there's paralysis or loss of sensation, uh, even on the opposite side of the body, and also noted usually are irregularities in the breathing or the heart rhythm. Um, something that commonly happens uh, is alcohol overdose, and when too much alcohol is processed, and of course remember alcohol is one of those things that can cross the blood-brain barrier, it suppresses the medullary rhythmic centers, so uh, it can cause the heart rate to be disrupted as well as the breathing patterns, and that of course can lead to death. Next we'll look just briefly at the pons. So the pons, as you see here, is just above or superior to the medulla oblongata and anterior in front of the cerebellum. Pons means bridge. So the pons is a bridge that connects parts of the brain to each other, to other parts, by bundles of axons. The pons has centers that along with the respiratory centers in the medulla are going to help control breathing. So it has pneumotaxics. I'm sorry, pneumotaxic areas. Pneumotaxic, of course, refers to respiratory. So it relays nerve impulses from one area of the brain to another and helps to control breathing with the medulla oblongata. The midbrain is superior to the medulla and the pons and extends from the pons to the diencephalon. A couple of important structures within the midbrain are the cerebral peduncles and the corpora quadrigemina. I know it's another one of those times you wonder where all these words came from, right? So the cerebral peduncles are going to be responsible for basically conducting nerve impulses from areas in the cerebral cortex to the spinal cord and the medulla and the pons. On the posterior part of the midbrain, there are four rounded elevations. Those are the corpora quadrigemina. Corpora means body, quad we know means four. So the corpora quadrigemina are going to contain 
reflex centers for certain eye activities as well as a part of the auditory or hearing pathway. The cerebellum occupies the inferior and posterior part of the cranial cavity. Like the cerebrum, it is divided into two hemispheres. The cerebellum functions to coordinate movement of skeletal muscle and to help us to maintain the normal muscle tone that helps to uh, keep us upright to maintain posture and balance. The cerebellum also is going to be responsible for processing input from the cerebral cortex, some of the nuclei in the, located within the brain stem, and uh, houses sensory receptors or processes uh, information from sensory receptors. Excuse me. So when you look at a cross section of the cerebellum, you can see there's an outer layer of dark matter. Remember, we call that gray matter. And then an inner section that you see right here of white matter. That white matter uh, houses many of the vital areas that work with the brain stem and other parts of the brain uh, for very vital activities. And aptly, it is named Arbor Vitae, Tree of Life. Damage to the cerebellum can result in a loss of ability to be able to coordinate muscular movements. That condition is called ataxia, which simply means without order. So people that are blindfolded with ataxia cannot touch the tip of their nose with their finger because they can't coordinate the movement uh, and their sense of where a body part is located. Another sign of ataxia is when the speech pattern is altered due to uncoordinated speech muscles. Cerebellar damage can result um, in a staggering or abnormal walk, so very uncontrolled movements. People who consume too much alcohol show a temporary ataxia because alcohol inhibits the activity of the cerebellum. These individuals usually can't pass a sobriety test. Ataxia can also result uh, from degenerative diseases such as MS and Parkinson's or trauma, brain tumors, or genetic factors.